Hi there, Karen Flaherty from Living by Human Design. Uh, today in the Human Design Weather, we're going to be talking about the Gate 17, which is typically called the Gate of Opinions. So today, March 24th, the sun moved into the gate 17 from the gate 25, and now we've got the 17 coming off the Ajna um, right here on the left side of the Ajna. And then we've got the earth in gate 18, and um, that's coming off the bottom of the spleen down here. It's one of the fear gates, um, but a little less fearful than some of the others. It's, it is called the gate of correction, and the fears are the fear or the disdain for authority. Um, but this week, the, it's a relatively quiet week. Um, the, the nodes are in the 4323. And so, as I said before, we've have the Ajna and the throat defined, um, but everything else is open. So um, that hopefully doesn't affect too many people. Um, and it, it um, but it does give people, you know, with the defined Ajna, it makes their thinking a little more rigid, perhaps a little more um, immovable, and it uh, gives them the feeling, some people, the feeling that they've got the throat defined. Um, but those are the only two centers that are defined all week. So then we've got the sun in gate 17, uh, the gate of opinions. This is uh, called following or opinion in the original I Ching. And so it's the ancient law that those who wish to rule must know how to serve. Um, so it, while, it, while we do call it opinion, it's really about leading. It's, it's about having the opinions that allow you to lead. So it's, think of it at a, on a kind of a higher level than what we might think of people as, for example, being opinionated, when we call them opinionated, um, we think of them as being rigid and, and not really um, open-minded. Um, but here it's um, the idea in the I Ching is that, and, and probably going forward uh, today is, is that people have to have opinions to be able to lead, right? Um, without an opinion, where's the vision? Where's the, you know, the, the way forward, right? Um, the incarnation crosses this week are the crosses of service, opinions, and upheaval. And then in the gate 18, it's called the gate of correction or work on what has been spoiled. In other words, it's things that need fixing, right? Things that need to be corrected or changed or improved. That's what this correction is about. And so uh, they say it's the vigilance and determination to uphold and defend basic and fundamental human rights, which is kind of an interesting way to put it because, um, you know, when we think about correction, we think about a math problem or you know, uh, something, an article that needs to be edited perhaps, or, you know, uh, a microwave that doesn't work or something that needs to be fixed, right? But what in the I Ching, and this doesn't happen very often, you know, from what I've seen, um, and believe it or not, it's been a year that I've been doing these transit reports now. Um, I don't really remember them being that um, worried, let's say, about social justice or even mentioning mm -hmm. social justice. So I, I was a little surprised to see it here. Um, but to uphold and defend basic and fundamental human rights um, was not um, the way I would usually see the original I Ching. So I was a little surprised to see this one. Anyway, it certainly can be applied to upholding and defending human rights. And um, I think some of the corrections that we're seeing going on now with regard to social justice and um, some, some um, protests, you know, whether people are involved because of social justice or gender rights or voting rights or any of the rights that people um, defending, those are the kinds of things that show up during um, correction or for people with this gate in their charts. In the Gene Keys, judgment is the shadow, integrity is the gift, and perfection is the CD. So this Gate 17, or Gene Key 17, is, is um, kind of interesting in that the shadow is opinion, the gift is farsightedness, and the CD is omniscience. And so in the graphic, uh, Richard says, to see perfection is to embody perfection. Um, and this is what he means by omniscience. Um, in, in the Gene Key book, the whole discussion around this was that the shadow um, is the is opinion, um, where we have an opinion, but it's a very, um, the way he describes it is that we have an opinion, it's based on one side 
of the equation, if you will, you know, whether it's one side of the political party or one side of the economic theory or one side of uh, whatever the story is, right? And that you're not willing to see the other side. And the difference is that when you get to the gift, which is farsightedness, you can see both sides, right? You can basically pull up to 30,000 feet and say, oh, okay, now I can see how, how you might see that. And it's much more open-minded, much more contextualized, and much more um, willing to see not only the other side, but the entire context that it's part of. And so you really get the whole story. And so the opinions are very, they're based in duality, right? They're based in either or, like you can't be, you have to be one or the other, you can't be both. And the gift pulls back a bit and says, oh, we really can be both. And sometimes we are both. And sometimes both things are true. And yet, you know, we can still be um, friends. We can still understand each other if we're willing to see the, the entire context and, and see it with a farsightedness that we didn't have previously. So we move from one to the other. And then the, the CD is omniscience, where you really can see the not only the entire picture, but what's really going on for everyone and um, really see it from even further out. So he says, your opinion sprout from seeds that were planted at some point within your first seven years, um, because he sees the opinion as a bias, right? A bias toward religion or economics or science or whatever. And, and usually those are, you know, come about in the first seven years when we are forming our um, view of the world, right? Um, he also says farsightedness can be said to arise directly out of the heart rather than from the mind. So when with the heart, we're able to almost feel other people, right? And, and feel the empathy, feel the pain, feel the suffering that other people have and see it from a much um, bigger viewpoint than we're able to feel it in the heart as opposed to just in the mind. So um, this week in the Sungate 17, we've got the right angle cross of service, the juxtaposition cross of opinions and the left angle cross of upheaval. And um, these are a few of the people who have uh, birthdays this week. There actually weren't as many as usual. Um, and I've decided that instead of um, doing the history portion, which I usually do next, um, I'm going to move to uh, just look, taking one of the personalities who were born uh, in this sun sign, uh, sun gate 17. And um, just go into a little more depth with them. So this week I chose um, Diana Ross. And so we'll take a look at her chart. So, so here's the chart for Diana Ross. She was born on March 26th in 1944. So she'll be 77 years old this week. And she is a manifesting generator. Uh, she has, um, uh, and she's kind of a little bit different manifesting generator in that she has a connection uh, from the throat to the G and then from the G to the sacral. Some other manifesting generators, actually quite a few of them have the 3420. That's not what um, Diana Ross has. She has it directly from the throat to the G to the sacral. Um, but she has a lot of definition and she's got eight out, out of the all the centers to find only one open that's the will center um and even off the will center she has the gate 51 which is the gate of shock um but she as you can see has the uh sun in gate 17 and the uh earth in gate 18 and so she had and so she had her opinions um but i think she but she's also got this 1858 um so she's got the 18 gate of corrections which is connected to the 58 which is in her unconscious sun and the 58 is the joy of life. And so she was always willing to um, change things up so that they would bring people joy. And really, how much joy did she bring to the world, right? Um, with all the songs and albums and movies and uh, Broadway shows and things that she's created, um, there's you know quite a legacy there. Um, she's also got the 6124, which goes from the head to the ajna. This is um, the channel of um, basically holistic awareness and um, the uh, uh, holistic thinking also. And so you, you could see that she's a holistic thinker. Logical, yes. Had a business, yes. Was very successful in that business and was the creative force um, shortly behind, behind uh, the Supremes um, when they started out and then continued on her own career. Um, so while she is a manifesting generator, she doesn't have the throat connected to the head or the ajna. So um, 
uh, interesting. Uh, you know, I would I would love uh, to read more about it or find out how she, um, you know, got the songs, got the the ideas, and uh, how they how they played out. Because with this kind of configuration, with no um, uh, connection to the throat, usually people um, who are generators or manifesting generators are asked questions and answer the questions because they don't have any idea how much information is up there. Um, so uh, really the more questions she's asked or the more requests that are made of her, perhaps um, the, the better she would respond. Um, she does have the 31 seven, which is very powerful. It's actually the channel of the alpha. Um, and, and she has the gate of the queen and she has the gate of the, um, uh, we call it metamorphosis. Um, it, it's basically knowing how to speak in the moment. A lot of manifesting generators do have this, um, and she has it both conscious and unconscious, consciously. So, um, but this channel of the alpha is a combination of influence when she speaks, which she definitely had, and leadership, right? So she was the leader um, and was requested, asked to be the leader. She didn't say I'll be the leader. She was asked to become the leader um, after of the Supremes after. Um, the other woman left. And then the 4629 is always great to see in this kind of a person, persona, really, icon, uh, because this is the channel of making a commitment with the gate 29, and then with the gate 46, persevering, right? The gate of perseverance and determination, and she certainly had both of those. And it, it's almost, um, it's the kind of uh, channel, uh, called it channel of discovery, where she is actually making it look easy, right? Making it look like, and I think I talked about this last week, where she's like the duck floating on the um, on the water very gracefully, and her little legs are, are going very furiously beneath the surface. Um, and um, and she, and she was able to, you know, make a make a go of it and make a make money doing it, which was difficult in those days in in Motown and Detroit um, because many of the managers. And the producers held the strings and they didn't allow the performers to really make that much money. She also has the, um, one more thing I'll mention, she's got this gate 4130, which is what um, um, defines her solar plexus and root. And so she was able to, um, uh, yes, be emotional, um, but also have this creativity from the gate 41 and the 30, which is the gate of intensity, which allowed her to, um, do what she did basically to have the creativity to do it, the intensity to pursue it and to persevere and to keep going and uh, to really make a, a wonderful career of it. So, um, so I hope that uh, helps a little bit. Um, she did have intensity too in, in the moon, which is, so it's, it's a bit of a motivating factor for her. And then she also did have the gate 14, which is the gate of um, money which is a nice gate to have um, when you're in business. And she had the gate 15, which allowed her to um, basically uh, have a love of humanity. Yes. Um, but also a, um, we call it the gate of extremes where she was able to, uh, well, let's say where she didn't need a rhythm per se. The other half of it is the five, which needs a rhythm every day. She was able to to do the extremes, which is interesting because she was in the Supremes. She was able to do the extremes that were required to be on the road and 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 producing albums and you know being up in uh, being in concerts night after night after night, traveling all over the world and doing what she needed to do to make a success of the Supremes and and later on in her own career. And so um, that's not a you know that's not a nine to five job right? That's not something that you can depend on day to day. Every day was probably different for her. And every day she was able to succeed because she had that gate of extremes and could go and go and go. Um, this is a chart with a lot of energy. As you can see, she had uh, three out of the four motors. And um, the only thing that would have slowed her down perhaps a little bit um, was the open will center, which is where she would take in energy from other people, and which is where she may have suffered from some self-esteem issues uh, in the beginning. I don't know enough to say how long those lasted. Um, obviously, she overcame them later or overcame them, overcame them to some extent uh, later in her career as she became so famous and such an icon. So um, happy birthday, Diana Ross. Um, I hope you all have a great week. Um, be careful of the opinions in your own life, in the opinions that you hear from other people, and um, we'll see how things go with 
the uh, talks in Europe this week. And um, of course, we're all hoping for a peaceful outcome. So have a great week and I'll talk to you soon. Take care.